All right, let's dive right into the valley. Yeah. Before we do, there are some things that we have to talk about on the internet because apparently Kristen got into it with Janet on Instagram and then Janet got into it with Zach on X slash Twitter. And it all revolves around something that Janet is claiming Zach said to her that is really vile. And I think it is along the lines of something like, well, I hope your baby doesn't go to term and I hope you die or something like that. Like really fucking terrible and vile. This is something that Janet is saying that Zach said and is also claiming that Kristen knows about this and that. Kristen is somehow responsible for not checking Zach. Like, without me breaking it down, let me just show the graphic here and also read what was said between Kristen and Janet first. So Kristen is responding to somebody's Instagram, not Janet's, that were breaking down a podcast interview that Janet had been on. And Kristen says... I had a fucking pregnancy loss. I would never in a million years say something like that. Wait for me to post the texts where I asked Janet about her pregnancy, including when she texted me the baby's first heartbeat and oh yeah, I was at her gender reveal. This is revolting. So Kristen is saying that Janet's claims that she's backing up Zach, who allegedly said these things, It's really terrible of Kristen and Kristen's coming back with, I was there for you. I was supporting you. We were texting. Wow. To this, Janet responds and says, Kristen Dowdy, it absolutely is revolting that your BFF Zach said out loud that he was hoping I would miscarry and commit suicide this summer. All of our friends and castmates were aware of what he said and reached out expressing how disgusted they were by Zach's death wish upon my unborn child, except for you. Glad to hear now that you find his comments as revolting as everyone else does. Mm. So I have to take your temperature here. Do we think Zach, who I think probably has a penchant for being Mm. shady, is so gross that he would say something like that to Mm. Janet? No, I don't think. I think Janet is not trustworthy. I think she's chronically online and in the comment section she's very hyper aware of like what everyone's saying about her because everyone fucking hates her on the valley she's a total b-i-c-t-h that's not how you that spell order. that b-i-c-t-h yeah that's the you know that clip no that's a famous clip no i'm, I'm, I'm being a boomer yeah right you now. are totally a boomer <laughs> <laughs> that's a famous <laughs> clip b-i-c-t H and in that order. I've never heard. No, I've never Girl, seen that. Girl, I'll show it to you <laughs> later. <laughs> you boomer. I was just wanting to correct you. I don't want you to look dumb online, honey. But I now know I what look I'm dumb. Doing. On- My bad. Girl. Anyway, yeah. I think Janet's a total B I C T H. Yes. And I don't believe her. I don't believe that he would say such vile, awful things. Just like how earlier in the season, she's the one calling Michelle racist and mm-hmm. homophobic mm-hmm. and all of this shit and then denying it completely because right. she wants to be on Michelle's good side. And one thing I'm noticing is that she says all of our friends and castmates were aware of what he said, not that they heard him say it, but that they were made aware of it. And it was probably by Janet. Uh So maybe he said some shady shit to her and she's spinning it this way. But I personally don't. I agree. I don't believe Zach actually said that. Yeah, no. And I mean, and if he didn't say that, to say that he did is so messed up is really gross well and if he did actually say that and he's lying or he denies it or whatever and he's like no i never said that and we get receipts later on then screw zach he's right. a piece of shit so right. i don't know it's all hearsay at this point then we have on x and twitter where somebody made a post about those gay guys and the one in particular <laughs> simon who is wearing the pink crocs <laughs> and the person on x referred to them as her minions because they are and zach comes in and says yes they're her minions and janet responds to zach so she's in the comment section totally. zach certainly didn't add her and i don't actually see the first the first comment so i'm not sure if the poster added her but anyway janet found it and she comes in and she's like my minions the only thing i asked of you when you sincerely apologized for your inexcusable actions was distance and to not continue to come for me while i work on attempting to forgive you i knew your apology was fake and you meant every disgusting word you said wow to which he did not respond 
this Yikes. is what she's saying. And I think also on the Valley in an interstitial, she was talking about how she was trying to rebuild with Zach mm. and get their friendship back on track. Mm. And how like after all of this, after the phone call where he's, you know, getting mad because he's not going to Big Bear. She's like, yeah, after this, I don't know if we can do that. And that's what she's referring to. She's trying to build a friendship back with Zach because she's alleging he said these vile things. Now, if Zach said that, that is so shitty and oh, awful. Oh, totally, yeah. But I don't believe he did. And that is just a testimony of how much I do not like Janet. And I don't believe a thing that she's giving and serving in this season. Nope. I think she's super manipulative. And she's married to a lawyer now. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know how to play the game and your total mean girl energy. Like, even in this episode where she's like totally using her pregnancy as an excuse to be just awful. It's like, girl. And pretend she's so afraid. Okay. I'm so afraid that they're in Big Bear. Shut up. Calm down. It was obviously a troll. Right. Like, it's so cringe. And how old is she? Like, some 30-something? Yeah, mid-30s, late 30s. Yeah. Girl, act your age. Mm -hmm. She's so immature and so dumb. Well, also speaking of the internet and things people are saying... You were talking about, and I also noticed that on Reddit, in the Valley subreddit, they're talking about Danny, particularly yes. from this episode. And a lot of people had smoke for Danny, and they did not like the things that he said. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, okay, look, in my opinion... Mm -hmm. I feel like men are allowed to have feelings. Yes. And I feel like husbands are allowed to have feelings because they take on a lot of burden. I mean, not just husbands, like spouses in general. Sure. Like when you have big life changes, when you have three little kids, like that's a lot. It's a lot to handle on both parties. Like not saying that Nia is not doing anything, like, but he's just crying to his bros who he thinks are his bros when they don't actually give a crap. But like he's just venting and talking about how he's just like, I'm under a lot of freaking pressure and stress and everybody on reddit's like he's terrible he's misogynistic and well, I'm like, i don't know that's that. because that's not all he did though he wasn't just crying and expressing his feelings about his burden in his life he also said that he made a blanket statement that wives don't appreciate their husbands and what they do mm. and jesse also co-signed yeah. it and said yeah they never do they don't see what we do for them they dismiss it entirely and danny danny said that and i i'm like that's wild and i i mean it's one thing to say my wife dismisses me my yeah. wife doesn't understand what i'm going through but like to then say this is how all moms are this is how all wives are yeah is misogynistic yeah. on its face and objectively now he seems drunk in this scene yes and everybody's been drinking all day and i have grace for danny and i am sure even though he didn't give birth to these children out of his vagina mm -hmm. that He's under a lot of stress and he's doing a whole hell of a lot. I mean, but like as he's putting babies on boobs, there's a woman there with boobs taking babies. Right. So right, it's right, not right. like you have an extra load or a, an, an extra responsibility that Nia also doesn't have. But again, it's a drunken expression to the bros. Yeah. And I'm like... I would let that go. That's, I think he's a nice person. That's my thought on right. it. Like, I don't think he's like full blown crazy. And like, I think there's a lot of discourse online right now, especially like in the trad wife, trad husband circles. I don't know if Danny's a part of that. And I'm, I'm not judging it or anything. I, like, whatever you do, you, you believe whatever you want to believe. But that's kind of the discourse that goes on is like women need to be appreciative of their husbands because they work so hard and they provide and like women should be so thankful. And so I just... That's what it kind of felt like a little. And I can understand why people think he's being shitty. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, he's drunk. He's tired. He's mm -hmm. also a dad who's mm -hmm. dealing with all of this too. And he's working and he's providing for the family. Like, cut him some fucking slack. Yeah. And I think the audience is really quick to tear somebody down who up until this point has shown us that he's a great husband. Exactly. A great dad. Like he's built a lot of social credit with us. Right. <laughs> and with me in particular, I really like Danny and I really like Nia. And I don't think a woman of quality like Nia, honey, would be with a guy who is a misogynistic prick. Right. At all. I think she'd walk. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't have to come for Danny so hard. No. In my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean. <laughs> but that's Reddit for you, honey. Totally. And there's a difference between Danny saying something like that and Jesse saying something like that. Jesse yes. has proven himself to be totally an asshole and he does not respect women, especially Michelle. So there that's kind of like where I'm at. I think Danny's just frustrated and he's tired and yeah. he's he's doing a lot. And yeah, he said something dumb, but like that's literally the only dumb thing he said right. for 10 episodes I know. now. So yeah. it's like 
let's just chill. Yeah, totally <laughs> agree on opinion. your take with that. But 100%. it does kind of seem like Nia and Danny are going to have a little fight next episode. Maybe. Well, because what I notice with Nia is she's constantly trying to censor him. Like when mm. there are various and sundry arguments happening in the group, like at various dinners and such, Danny wants to say something and she's always covering his mouth. She's always telling him to be quiet. So it looks like she's going to try and do that again next week and he's going to be sick of that shit and I do think it's a fair critique actually yeah because Nia seems to run out of the room as soon as there's drama it's always like oh my babies or my babysitter or I've got to pump my milk or this or that and like she doesn't actually stay in the mix of it Mm -hmm. and contribute on that level and I'm sorry but that's what you signed up for it is it's a reality tv show and it's toxic af and you signed up for this and so if your husband wants to participate in conversations and give his viewpoint which by the way i think we need sure because it's danny and nia yeah and they should contribute to the conversation but she just wants to run from the room that's not how you do reality tv nia i love you i think you're all grace all beauty all perfection but if you're going to be on this show you're just going to have to get in there and you're going to have to mix with the other people oh for sure and like i had said like i think it was like last episode danny and nia are too good for this show and too good for reality tv and i think it's what we're seeing now is they're getting influenced by the toxicity of this group like nia i know is dealing with postpartum and so she's got a lot of like emotions and stuff and that's totally valid and totally fine danny i think is getting influenced by the guys a little bit because right before that scene in the preview where he's like, let me talk, let me say what I want to say. The guys are straight up telling him, yeah, you're getting emasculated by your wife. She wears the pants, grow some balls and be a man. And to say that to a man can really bring up a lot of feelings and a lot of like, oh, crap, I do have to assert my masculinity. And so I just kind of wonder with Danny being kind of a sensitive person, he was getting upset at Jesse totally teasing him and wrestling with him last episode like I think he's probably a little bit emotionally charged and that's why he gets frustrated with Nia right and on the heels of being told that you're emasculate or or that you're not like a full man that you don't wear the pants in in your marriage like she goes and she checks you right in front of everybody so it's like bad timing Nia (laughs) exactly but yeah I'm very interested to see how that goes down and how Danny responds to that me too I hope he's a king about it yeah I hope he's not gonna say some more misogynistic (laughs) stuff we shall see we shall see um before we get into the episode I do have a takeaway like it's just after I watched it you know I sit there and I think to myself Delia (laughs) what'd you think about that any thoughts usually there are none but this time my takeaway is really about Brittany vomiting all the time Mm. it's kind of strange to me and listen I'm no stranger to an alcoholic (laughs) beverage honey okay I was what's happened you last night having a great Time. totally yeah um so i'm not here to judge anybody's alcohol consumption or anything but the fact that she is drinking and vomiting a lot because remember we had v- nausea i don't know if vomiting but i think maybe at the sake party at janet's mm-hmm. we had vomiting into a bag after the girls trip to malibu we've got vomiting again on this trip to big bear we've seen her have hangovers on other occasions where she's really not having a good time and I do seem to remember when she was on Vanderpump Rules that she was diagnosed with some kind of an ulcer and the doctor told her no more alcohol. Oh. Like for a period of time, at least until it heals. Huh. And ulcers can heal. Yeah. But like the doctor's like, yeah, you got to stop drinking. But even on VPR, she did not. She continued to take her tequila shots. Yuck, Yikes. yuck, yuck. And have a, a burning stomach. And so Jack's talking about how he's been dealing with this for eight years. I mean, he acted like a brute and a Neanderthal and a barbarian and I'm not going to defend him but I'm just wondering like why are we vomiting so much it's not just because you have a sensitive tummy honey Mm. there's something here like where there's smoke there's fire and if you do still have an ulcer after all these years that's a problem can't those become cancerous oh yeah well and they can become recurrent and they can get worse and i mean if she already had an ulcer like in her 20s i'm like what's your liver like what's your gallbladder like like why are you you throwing up so much throwing up so much that's scary to me well and like when i was watching this episode my first thought for some reason was like is she on ozempic <laughs> like is she right. throwing up a lot because huh. she's on ozempic because she's claiming in this episode she didn't drink at all but then when she starts yelling at Jax, I heard her say, I only had two drinks today. Right. And I'm like, oh, 
girl. Right. No, you're an alcoholic. I think she's pr- totally drinking a lot, but I think Jack's is driving her to drink. I think she's unhappy with her life. Mm-hmm. And that's not his fault. Like she's an adult and should be responsible for her behavior. Like don't become an alcoholic when you have a kid. Like, yeah. I chill mean, out. Take care of your marriage. Like either Hello. stay in and rehabilitate it or get out and go live your life, but don't be an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But I do think this has been going on for a really long time. And if her body is rejecting alcohol on this level, like I would, I I personally would be freaked out. Yeah, that's bad. Like you can't even enjoy your life if this is what's happening when you drink. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, it kind of does lend itself to Jax's arguments where he's like I have been dealing with this for so long and so when I see her throwing up again yeah I don't have a lot of sympathy for her because she does this deliberately to herself and you know it's affecting me it's affecting my kid it's affecting our life he doesn't express that the right way no he abuses her and shames her and tries to humiliate her yeah but at the same time the core of his complaint is valid yeah yeah Mm-hmm. I, I I would assume so. But like the way he goes about it is really terrible. And at the same time, when he's yelling at her in this episode about the drinking, he's talking about how he had, he drank two bottles of tequila. He's like, I'm fine though. So why can't you hold your liquor like me? And it's like, geez, right. you guys are both terrible. Yes. You're also an alcoholic if you're drinking two bottles of fucking I tequila. I can't even conceive of a That's world where wild. that would happen. And you're doing coke, and allegedly. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> and it's really not fair. No. Like just because her body can't handle it and yours can doesn't mean you don't have a drinking problem and she does. It just means that her body processes it differently. So why aren't you not drinking? Why aren't you making lifestyle changes to promote health? and all that in your relationship and in your life but you won't do that right exactly. you won't curtail your behavior even a little but you will dogpile her for drinking well and just i just wonder toxic. if she's drinking as much as she, he's saying she is like he's acting like she's a drunk like totally drinking a ton to the point of vomiting but it, it kind of sounds like she'll just have like a sip or she'll have a, one drink or two but then immediately get sick and like that happens to people like I don't drink anymore because every time I do I get sick and I can have like wine every now and then but if I drink like liquor I'm totally nauseous I've got the spins after one drink and Mm -hmm. it sucks but it's not like I'm an alcoholic it's not like some people are just sensitive to it some people push through that and they don't give a fuck they're like I'm just still gonna drink that's Brittany that's what it seems like with Brittany I don't think she drinks just a little bit I actually do think she Mm. probably drinks a lot and we've seen her over the years drinking a lot of tequila and loving to party and I just I think that's probably who she is and what she does but he probably drinks way more than she does it sounds like it if he's drinking two bottles of tequila he can hold his well they're at a they're at the big bear they're partying hopefully he's not doing that every day it's just the audacity of Jax to come for her like that and and just and also the other women screaming at them to tell him the truth I'm just like I mean do that in front of my husband scream at me like that I was shocked that none of the other husbands said anything to Jax for yelling at those girls I know talk about nobody being a real man Mm -hmm. like what are you doing your husband would never never oh Oh my god please try it no absolutely give him a reason oh my god he's looking for a reason in his life (laughs) give him one reason (laughs) he totally does your daughter's the same way Mm -hmm. she always is like that's why God doesn't put nothing in my way because I'll (laughs) I'll destroy people right (laughs) that's totally what it is but yeah i couldn't believe how jack like last episode Jax is yelling at britney on the beach in front of everybody and i'm like that's embarrassing and cringe and then you're having a full-fledged screaming fight in front of everybody in this airbnb i'm like (gasps) yeah really mortifying but i mean there's a difference between fighting in front of other couples and being super toxic and then also yelling at those dudes wives mm, like directing yeah, yeah. It at somebody else besides Brittany. like the moment you're starting to yell at these other women um, and being a dick about it like you've just crossed a line I, and I'm just like shocked like Jason where are you mm-hmm. Danny I think Danny actually went to bed Johnny may have gone to sleep I'm not sure yeah. but like Jesse with all your bravado where are you <laughs> oh I forget you like to yell at women too so yes. you don't care yeah. but I mean it was Interesting how later in the episode, Jesse starts to call out Jax for his behavior and um, also how he might want to handle his wife and not do it in a group setting. Like he did speak up, not in the moment, yeah. but he did say something ultimately. Afterwards, which was really interesting. I think it was like on the boat or something. He's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have done that in front of everybody. And Jax is like, 
yeah, I should have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, well, when am I supposed to bring it up? Because it happens all the time. And I'm very frustrated about it. And I've been dealing with it for so long. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand that you're frustrated. But like, geez, this is the mother of your child. Maybe have a little bit more respect. Go get some couples therapy. Like Janet suggests mm-hmm. to them. like Which you- was the only reasonable thing that we've heard from Janet this all entire season. time. Yep. Yep. And jacks and his talking head is like well i've done therapy in the past but it hasn't worked for me and i'm like you're one of those yep got it just like lala i can't with that yeah that was really really bad but then we see like the very next day him and Brittany are talking and he's apologizing kind like of. we've seen him apologize to her a lot for the way that he acts but then he goes right back and comes right back in on his bullshit and starts doing it again which is why she rolls her eyes and she does not believe anything that he says and in her interstitial on the couch with her big old bosoms <laughs> her big old bosoms. overflowing yeah she's talking about like i just can't do this anymore it's really not working for me and he doesn't listen to me and he treats like, he treats me like this all the time and so she's at her wits end i'm glad she's finally aware of that but i'm like why did it take you so long but i shouldn't blame her for that Mm -hmm. i guess like you were in love or whatever i can't understand it it's kind of weird to me but like when jacks apologizes the next day i was so grossed out because he's just like yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry are we good now and then he gets up and leaves like Mm because she's like yeah it's okay and she says in her talking head this is how they always do it they have a fight. He'll say sorry, but he doesn't mean it. And then he acts like everything's totally fine. Rug and everything sweeper. resolved. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that is so bad. Yeah. See, if Dr. Orna was here yeah, on couples have therapy. A lot to say. And by the way, we're going to be covering <laughs> yes. Dr. Orna on, Dr. Orna on couples therapy on Patreon starting in June, if yes. you guys want to check that out. But yeah, all of these marriages, all of these marriages have some problems oh yeah what did you think about the guys on the boat talking about all of their marital issues and like jesse calling out jacks and jacks being like yeah we're never gonna get divorced i thought that was very interesting i don't really understand jesse like coming in as an authority (laughs) on marriages when yours is like absolutely broken (laughs) yeah and your wife hates you yeah and you don't know how to be a good husband even though you're trying and getting your ayahuasca on you're not really doing it Mm -hmm. so i just didn't know how he had the balls to take all of these other husbands to task but at the same time he's not wrong i know (laughs) he's not wrong well he's wrong about danny he said something to danny about nia wearing the pants yes and that he doesn't have confidence yeah that because she is more authoritative and she's more assertive, he doesn't have the pants and he doesn't have the confidence or whatever. Like, I thought that was wild. I'm like, dang. I mean, you've got to be very careful when you say something like that to your point, which you had just mentioned. But like, I also haven't seen that with Nia. No. And Danny, they have like a very beautiful partnership. It's like lateral. It's it's 50-50. They're both doing it together. I haven't seen her pushing him around i haven't right. seen her dictating anything other than telling him to shut up at the table like don't don't get into the problems yeah no and like i mean that's a fair point too like i wonder what the context is like danny you don't need to put your two cents into all of these other people's fucked up lives like mm-hmm. you're a man of quality i assume hopefully if you're not misogynist mm-hmm. um but yeah i i don't know what what's his face jesse was getting at with danny like i don't know why you were saying that she wears the pants why because she's got a black belt in taekwondo and she's kind of a confident woman and she says her mind like what what are you getting at i think it's very telling that when he got really drunk and rambunctious he picks on danny and i feel like because he's in such an unhappy relationship and he probably sees how well balanced Danny and Nia are and how in love they are. Like he's projecting bullshit Mm. onto them and trying to knock him down a peg because his ego is so fucking out of control. Um, So that felt like bullshit to me. But when he was talking to Jax, I felt like he was spot on. And it seemed in the moment like Jax heard him. A little bit. Well, he was telling Jax that he doesn't have to prove himself to Mm -hmm. anybody. He doesn't have to prove himself to his wife. But I'm like, he kind of does. A little bit. I mean, Jax, you're not doing a great job. And if you want to keep your marriage together, then you're going to have to prove that up. And you're going to have to be a better person. You're going to have to show Brittany that. Yeah. But anyway, it, it felt to me like Jax was taking the critique that his relationship wasn't as great as he was saying. And despite them not believing in divorce and they will never be separated and she's going to have to bury him in the backyard and he's never leaving her and she is never leaving him, which obviously 
she has gone on to leave him. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. He's just like also accepting that his marriage, just like Jesse's, is on the fence or on the rocks. Yeah. And struggling, which I thought was weird. I'm like, wh- how can you believe not believe in divorce, but then say at the same time, like you guys are struggling and having a lot of problems. Like you guys aren't screwing. You guys aren't affectionate you, you guys cannot communicate can't communicate at all you freaking fight all the time she's drunk you're a drunk and probably a cokehead like you guys are in shambles and i think like maybe what jesse was trying to get at is like dude swallow your pride like just admit that you are at fault that your guys's marriage is failing i know that sucks i know that's a shitty thing feeling to feel and like nobody wants to sit there and be like yeah we're having problems we need to go to couples therapy like it it's really devastating like it's hard nobody wants to feel that but swallow your pride and do it and be a man and work on your marriage if that's what you want right and i think on the couch jesse said that jacks and Brittany are where he and michelle were a year ago yeah and it's really important at this stage in the relationship where things are starting to fall apart that you see the signs and you like immediately address them because when they were having their man talk I thought it was pretty poignant when Jesse said you know Michelle went this way and I kind of corrected to follow her but she just kept on moving yeah and so I never caught up to my wife and we're we're not together in that way so I think he's I think he's right I think (laughs) he sees the writing on the wall and he knows what's happening but at the same time his own shit is so broken that he, he doesn't really have a leg to stand on as an authority. Yeah. What did you think as a side note? Yeah. What did you think of the Napoleonic complex conversation <laughs> between <laughs> that was so good. Je- between Jason and Danny? Oh my God, that was so good. Them trying to educate Jesse on what a Napoleon complex is. Because I forget how he was defining it. No, it, Danny was. Danny was saying that a Napoleonic complex was when you're a short dude and you want to date shorter women because you don't want them to be taller than oh, I you. I thought Jesse was saying that. No, that was Danny. And then oh. Jason was saying, no, what a Napoleonic complex is, <laughs> is somebody who is overcompens- or compensating for being short by being yeah. an asshole, which is exactly correct. And then they were disagreeing about that. And then they went on to Google it and Jason's entirely right. <laughs> yeah. And Danny is wrong. Okay, I don't funny. think Danny has a Napoleonic complex. I did date somebody with a Napoleonic complex. Yeah. Uncensored. 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 I want to know all about it. Back from uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think Danny has a Napoleonic complex. No, Jesse does, though, for sure. Jesse does. This. Yo, he That's does. why when I was That's watching That's why his I... hair is this high. I know. So he can make it to 5'10", honey. <laughs> Yeah, and I think he even said Jesse's like I only date girls who are like five four and, and shorter because it makes me feel good about myself. And I'm like, Ugh. is that what Jesse said? I thought Jesse said something about he only dates thick girls. He does, and short girls. Okay, thick right. and short. All right, I, I kind of tune out sometimes when I he's know. talking because he's so fucking full of shit. I can't with him. Thick girls and short girls. Yeah, and okay. he was talking about how Michelle used to be thicker at the beginning of their relationship. Oh my god, he'd probably love um, me. Honey. <laughs> You want some thickness? I'm down with the thickness. Stop. (laughs) Down with the thickness. Yes. Okay, now what we have to talk about (laughs) is Zach and his IG story. Oh, my God. Because he made a story with just like a location pin, which said Big Bear, and implying, of course, that he was in Big Bear. It was obviously a troll. It was pretty funny hilarious he goes over to Kristen's apartment they have a spa day Mm -hmm. and they're just kind of cackling because they think it's really funny it's like not too petty no it's not too shady it's just kind of cute but Janet on the other hand first of all she's checking his IG stories why yeah why you why are you so interested she's crazy she's crazy checking his IG stories she sees it and she gets really concerned does that mean that him and Kristen and Luke are somewhere in Big Bear are I'm they gonna scared. come here do I need to call 911 <laughs> I couldn't Calm believe down, that. down, Janet. And I can't remember which guy said it. I think it was like Jesse. I think Jesse rolls his eyes and he's like, dude, it chill out. They're not in the woods. Like they're just being petty. They're probably drinking wine. Like it's fine. Calm down. But like I said, she is chronically online. She is in those comment sections. She is so concerned about what anybody is doing. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, you just don't have to care. Why are right. you checking his IG stories? Like, what, what do you think he's going to do for real? That's like, so absolutely weird. Absolutely nothing. But you're trying to make a scene, and you're also trying to further divide the group so mm-hmm. that Zach and Kristen are no longer invited. I honestly think at this point in filming last summer, 
Janet believes she can get rid of Kristen. <laughs> she can somehow get Kristen off the show and she why? can be the real star. I don't know why she would. It is so low down and dirty because it's Kristen who brought her onto the show. Mm -hmm. But I think at this point she believes that. And I'm just wondering to myself, Janet, what's happening in your mind as you see being chronically online how everybody hates you. Right. Like everybody wants you on the show. By the way, sidebar. What? Uh, the Valley was renewed for season two yeah. and they're bringing back the entire same cast. So <gasps> unfortunately, Janet's coming back, although maybe fortunately, because maybe now other cast members are going to come for her Ooh, after seeing what she said, seeing what she did, and then reading the audience's God. vibe. I wish i want them to come for her mm -hmm. i wish they would just surprise us with a reunion at the end of this season and be yeah. like yeah we said no but we heard you and we're gonna bring it back because everybody's bitching about it jesse and even mentioned it on watch what happens live on did? tuesday night he's like yeah unfortunately you know we can't address some of these things because we're not having a reunion i'm not sure why and andy didn't say anything to <gasps> that yeah oh my god maybe they'll bring it on they won't they won't they would have said so already they're not Rude. gonna do it and i don't know why i mean it would be great tv you would have great ratings so good I mean, you would be able to kind of keep up with the momentum of VPR because it ends right before that. So I don't understand. But I just think Janet looks so dumb. Oh, she looks so bad. Well, what did you think when she got mad when Jesse shushed her when she walked out and all the men were having their cry party, boy party? Yeah. And she's trying to tell them, hey, it's time to grill or it's time to eat. And Jesse's like, get out of here. We're talking. First of all, fuck you, Jesse. Yes, fuck Jason, you. where are you again? Jason, that's your job to say, don't talk to my wife like that. Right. And like, he doesn't. Right. And Jesse doesn't mean it. And I don't mean to defend him because I don't like him. Yeah. He doesn't mean it that way. And when she gets upset, he feels bad. But she gets really upset. And she's like, um, I'm not out here cooking all of your dinners just for you to yell at me and dismiss me like that. <sighs> I thought she was being a bit dramatic. Yeah. I understand she's pregnant. I understand she's got all those hormones and stuff. Okay. It's the shield for everything, though. I know. But, like, chill. It, you guys are on vacation. Everybody's drinking. They're just outside having a bro party. Make your food. Why do you have to serve them first? Like, why do you have to have them eat with you? Just make mm -hmm. your food. Right. She's like, bitch, she's like, I'm hungry and I want to eat. And Jason, you didn't defend me, which is fair. Like, mm -hmm. Jason should have done that. And he does apologize for it when he mm -hmm. goes in to comfort her. And he's like, oh, God, she's so fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she's a lot. But he's like, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Yeah. He's been trained. He knows how to do that. He does. He's <laughs> like, I don't like to see her cry. And I'm like, she must cry a lot then. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just like, you were just being crazy, Janet. She yeah. just wants to control everything. She does. She wants everyone. to be the hostess. She wants to be in charge of all the conversations. Yep. She does not want to be told to leave a room because they're having a grown up conversation without her. And I'm like, oh, why do you care? Personally, I'm like, if somebody was like, leave, I'm, I'm talking, I'd be like, okay, bye. I'm going to um, go make this a burger. I would say something smart. Like, say, come on, Janet. You got all this. You got all this fire. You got all this spice. Why don't you tell him to go fuck himself right. and go right back in and eat a fucking hot dog? <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to let somebody talk to me like right. that. Like, fuck you, suck these nuts. <laughs> and Jason, what the fuck, you pussy? For real. That's what I would have done. <laughs> you're a little bit more fiery. Well, but no, but Janet, in the moment, I mean, you're all talk, babe. You're yeah, all talk. Totally. And you're all behind the scenes with your machinations. Like, yep. put it on Front Street, bitch. Oh, yeah. She's you a big old Bailey. Oh, my Always God. hiding behind her pregnancy. I can't believe oh, that they would come to Big Bear and scare me when I'm pregnant. Nobody cares. <laughs> I know. A million For women real. are pregnant. And they're not being this crazy. Women been getting pregnant. For real. Jesus. I want, like, what's your excuse going to be on season two when you're still a big old bitch mm -hmm. and you're not pregnant and anymore? And you cannot hide behind your belly. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah, I don't know. She's just crazy, in my opinion. Yes. Um, we didn't cover Michelle oh, and yeah. Jax at the top of the episode. I was reading episode. my notes and I'm like, what else did we yeah, not cover? Yeah, Michelle and Jax talking about the sexy pictures that Kristen said Michelle sent to some celebrity, which we don't know who that celebrity is. <laughs> so Michelle says, um, I absolutely send pictures and things like that to my clients because that's part of networking as uh -huh. a realtor. Uh -huh. Yeah. And he's like, okay, but we're talking sexy photos. Like, are you sending sexy photos? And she's like, um, absolutely not. No. And ultimately, Jack's like, well, that's what's being said. Do you want me to tell your husband that this is the rumor or do you want to go tell him and she's like no I'll tell him what's being said so she marches up to the room where Jesse is mm -hmm. 
and tells him that Kristen is now saying that she is sending sexy photos to people. And in the moment, it was curious to me because Jesse kind of had her back because he calls Jackson because he doesn't want to just hear it from his own wife and trust her opinion and judgment. Uh, So she has to call, he has to call Jax there. But in the moment, he kind of has her back when he's like, well, I mean, that's what we do as realtors. We send pictures, we maintain friendships, we party with people. That's what it is. But then on the interstitial and then like with the context that we have sort of behind the scenes, we realize that that's not okay. Yeah. And he's not happy with that. But he does try to kind of cover for her in the moment, which is sort of chivalrous a little bit i'm like it's so weird they're very weird to me because in his interstitial jesse's like yeah i'm always telling michelle to go and give her number out to famous people and celebrities so i can get clients and stuff i'm always telling her to like pimp herself out basically to all these people so it's like okay you guys have kind of like an arrangement going on i don't think it's like He's telling her, Mm -mm. send titty pics. Like, he's not saying that. But he also says he didn't know about sexy pictures, though. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And she's, of course, denying it still, which I'm just like, girl, you're ready to leave him. So why don't you just say it? I know it's not the right time, but. And I think on Watch What Happens Live, his response regarding the reunion has to do with whether he believed Michelle was sending sexy pictures. Mm. And he wished he could have addressed it and other things in a reunion. Um, But I also think he said, he said or he made like she did actually send a sexy pictures. I believe it. Also on Watch What Happens Live, it was Mary Fuck Kill for Jesse. And it was Who Would You Marry? Who Would You Fuck? Who Would You Kill? It was Kristen, Nia, and Janet. And he said, I'd marry Kristen. And I I don't want to answer the rest of the question whoa something like that i mean he kind of he was thinking about it. he's like i don't want to answer the rest of the question but i thought it was very interesting mm. that he would choose to marry which is the highest i would say nia would be the one he'd want to marry but he chose to marry Kristen. so i'm wondering what's happening behind the scenes if there's conversations if there's re-engagement of relationships mm. whether he's now friends with Kristen. interesting yeah maybe they are friends that would be really cool to see like on season two like Kristen comes back and everybody turns their back against janet that would be so chef's Mm -hmm. kiss perfect but i bet it's because he didn't want to answer it because he would want to fuck nia he's kind of said it like on the drag party that they Mm -hmm. had where Mm -hmm. he was like kind of talking about like threesomes or so like everybody was talking about threesomes and a lot of people said nia but I wonder if, like, maybe that's, like, a point of contention between him and Danny and after Oh, everything. I wonder. And his girlfriend was in the audience when oh. he said that. So Jesse's? Yeah, Jesse. Jesse's got a girlfriend? Jesse's got a girlfriend and Michelle's Ooh. got a boyfriend. And he said that Michelle and her new boyfriend were actually over to his house for, like, a dinner party and they were the last to leave. And so they're on, like... Good terms Yeah, now? they're on good terms. They're, they're having a good relationship. I mean, that's good for your kid. It's kind of weird, though. It is a little odd. Who would want to date Jesse? I like, don't know. who thinks in their right mind? I don't know. I, I want to fuck that. I, you know, I keep thinking that we're in 2024 and men should know how to be good people. Yeah. Just like women should know how to be good people. But you have these men out here like Diddy. And you have these yes. men out here like Jesse. Not that they're just they're not the same. I'm not <laughs> trying to say they're the same. But like you have these toxic masculinity, right. these dudes that haven't learned anything. Oh, yeah. It's like, I don't know who would want to be with him. He's unenlightened and he's not necessarily good to women and or children. It's just like Jax and Sandoval and Schwartz and all these other dudes. Like all of you suck. Yeah. Even James, allegedly. Yes. <laughs> like all yes. of you suck. Now, Jesse did say on Watch What Happens Live with regard to the hallway incident with Kristen and everybody else where he was acting like a damn fool. Yeah. That he was definitely in a bad place. Oh. He was in a very reactive state of his life and like he wished he would have handled it differently. Well, that's good. He didn't come straight out and apologize for it, but he did seem to acknowledge that he was acting like an asshole. So maybe he's becoming conscious, like AI becoming self-aware. <laughs> that like he needs to make some changes in his life and hopefully he does well maybe the ayahuasca did help him then. maybe maybe he had a breakthrough an <laughs> ego death and breakthrough eco-death. was there anything else in this episode that was of interest i mean that was pretty much it i mean jason and jesse were totally calling jacks out at the very end saying that he was in denial of the state of his marriage mm-hmm. and i thought that was super based and i'm like i'm glad the guys can see that Brittany, i don't know i'm like the way she reacted with Jax I'm like what do you mean just well like not bad on her part like Mm -hmm. she's right 
to be mad and everything but i'm just like yikes you guys are in such a bad spot to like be fighting in front of everybody Gosh. i mean that's, when you're fighting in front of your friends that's bad it's really bad you're, you're on your way out yeah 100 yeah. and it's so awkward for everybody to be in the room with y'all so awkward mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm glad that all the girls were like supporting britney and everything and just like being there while she cries as her husband straight up screams at her for being a drunk and you know i think she has a fair point where He's totally trying to make her out to be like this horrible, Mm -hmm. terrible person. And that's where I was saying earlier, I'm like, I don't know if she is a full on fledged drunk. I would hope not because she's got a kid and everything. It seems like Jax, like you've been saying all season, he's trying to make her look bad for custody and for like the inevitable Mm -hmm. divorce. Do you believe him when he says that he doesn't believe in divorce and that he would never be separated? I mean, obviously they are separated and... Obviously, Brittany has agency, so she can leave if she wants to. But like, do we think he really wants to save this marriage? I, <laughs> I'm going to go uncensored. Well, let's come back from uncensored. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that yeah. tidbit. And if you guys want to hear the uncensored tidbits, well, then you have to subscribe to yeah. our Patreon. Uh, but what we were, we were talking about, whether we believe Jax and him saying that he's just not the divorcing kind. And do we think that he really wants to save this relationship or is it for appearances sake that he says these types of things? Yeah, totally for appearances. I mean, I think he doesn't want divorce as a label like he doesn't want to be somebody who's divorced in his mid 40s and single kind of like schwartz mm-hmm. being like oh god now i'm 40 something and i'm single this is miserable it's or, like, or jesse talking yeah. about being 42 well he's now 44 and being single and having a kid like he doesn't want that right That's a failure to a man yes and mm-hmm. it, i mean it's fair it's a fair point like it's a failure to a lot of people like sure, people think course. divorce is like such a terrible thing but at the same time it's like it is what it is. Like if you guys get together and your marriage sucks and you've tried everything in your power to fix it and couples therapy and yada, 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 mm-hmm. and it's still not working, that's fine. Break up. Pull the plug. It's fine. Yeah. But there's such there's still such a stigma around divorce, which I just find interesting because divorce has become so much more like common mm-hmm. nowadays. Right. But there's still that heavy stigma. Like people still look at you like, oh, you're divorced. Mm. I just found it interesting. I'm like, does Jax really have that kind of a traditional value around marriage and about around his wife? And I'm like, I, it ju- I just, I'm like dubious that he has any values. So yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the way you act, like you have no home training, but like you have this particular traditional value is just a little wild to me, a little weird. A little bit. But I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So did we have a preview? We did, right? What did we see in the preview? Yeah, there was some issues with Jackson, Brittany, and then there was issues with Danny and Nia. Right. And that was kind of it. It was like the last bits of Big Bear. And right. I think Zach's in there somewhere. It is really unfair. Can I just lodge a complaint with management? Sure. It is really unfair that they're going to spend three whole fucking episodes out of 12. I don't know how to do math, but like, <laughs> isn't that like 30% or something of the entire season? Three whole episodes with no Kristen and no Zach, which yeah. is why, again, Zach got really upset because he knew what this actually meant in terms of the show money. and that by him not being able to go and being able to film, he might not get money, but he also might not be able to be asked back because he doesn't have enough face time with mm. the cast and in front of the camera. So he knew what this would potentially cost him. Yeah. And I'm just like, why are we spending three whole episodes on a baby moon right. orchestrated by Janet without Kristen, who is the O? G. That's she needs to be there. And the production company needs to make sure that she's there. And by the way, if you're going to refuse to film with somebody, then get the fuck off the show. Janet and Michelle. First of all, we don't need you. We don't like you. Bye. But you shouldn't be able to, as a reality cast member, to say, well, I'm not Giselle from Potomac. I'm not going to film with Candace or I'm not going to film with this other person. Well, then you shouldn't be on the show at all. Peace out. And they really need to knock Janet down a peg and Michelle. Like, if you want to come back season two, you have to to film and we're not icing anybody out yeah it's, especially Kristen. i agree with that that's a really good point and just feels super weird like even on vpr it's kind of the same thing with ariana refusing to film with sandoval but then she inevitably does because it's probably part of her contract but it's just like you're tanking vpr it's totally gonna be canceled i feel like in my opinion it's gonna be shitty now you have this spinoff of the valley and you have this bitch janice on here that nobody wants Mm -hmm. nobody wants nobody asked for nobody wants michelle nobody wants jesse they all suck isn't michelle a dud oh my god she's horrible she brings nothing no energy nothing and nothing and she's a liar right like why are you gonna be lying about it's not reality if you're lying yes i don't want to see that 
because we can see through right through it. So yeah, it's just kind of interesting. I just don't want them to like do what they did with VPR on the Valley and ruin it there because mm-hmm. I'm actually enjoying the Valley. I think it's interesting. I do as well. I think all these marriage dynamics, all this stuff, like it's fascinating to me. I, I do as well. And as we have discussed previously, it's because they don't know how to be reality stars. Yeah. You can see Jax trying to produce like Lala, right? Yeah. You can see Jax and Brittany trying to advance certain storylines so as to deflect away from the problems that they have. Although Jax is also putting that on Front Street, which I love. Yeah. I love to see him being a basket case. Yeah. I love to see her barfing and being drunk all the time because that's real. Yeah. But you can also see how he's trained in reality TV and he's trying to create a show. Jesse's not though. Right. And Jasmine's not, and Zach is not, and all of these other people aren't. And so they're making like mistakes yeah. and showing their hand. And I love to see it. I love to. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want too. So they're all coming back for next season. And hopefully there's going to be some kind of a reckoning Please. because not having Kristen prominent in three episodes is a mistake. Totally. 100%. Is, she should have been there. Can you imagine if she was there? Like the kind of drama we would have seen, oh. the kind of conversations we would have so seen, great. the shit that she knows that she might have been talking about, but production allowed Janet to pull this power move and now we've got this bullshit. I wonder why. Is it because of Kristen's whole racist stuff back then? Is that why maybe? I don't know. The but I mean, if you're it? going to build a show around Kristen, then you shouldn't be worried about that, right? Because right? you are choosing to platform her again. So let her be on the show. Right. I think and I hope that the production company and Bravo learns from this season and that they make sure that she's featured and that she's respected in this way in season two. And I hope that they allow her to come for Janet and Michelle. Please. Fuck Michelle. I mean, honestly. Call her out. You been lying. You are anti-LGBTQIA. Yep. You potentially might be racist. Yep. I mean, I don't know if you're a Republican. That doesn't mean that you're racist. But like you might be all of these things that Janet said that you were. But we actually never got to have that conversation, though. No. Because of all the obfuscation and dogpiling on Kristen. So yeah. let's have that conversation season two. Let's find out who you really are. Michelle. That would be nice. And Janet. But the producers even have all these bitches on um, the after show for VPR. Like Janet was on the right. after show at the very end, right. piping in with her dumb takes about this show. And I'm like, get off my yeah. television. Yeah. I just love though, <laughs> sorry, this is going to be really petty and I apologize in advance. As the old woman in the room, I feel like I get Very to old. say shady bullshit, <laughs> shady bullshitty things. But like the way, what Janet's wearing in the after show, Horrible. she's got this side boob Girl. under arm fat i noticed that had this brisket fat pad just kind of pouring out from I her would be so she's going to watch it back and she's been watching it and totally. she's going to be like so mortified because it does not look good girl so she's sitting in that chair giving her opinion but she got her whole brisket out <laughs> she did got her whole brisket, <laughs> she got her whole brisket out honey she did. It's so bad uh, all we need is a smoker yeah <laughs> just we need a smoker some coleslaw <laughs> some beans all right is there anything else about this season this episode rather that, that was pretty much it about? yeah okay. unless you had any other thoughts i don't have any other thoughts in this entire head Me of neither. mine honey. <laughs> so is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go on to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review five. really helps us grow the pod so we become famous thank you we will be back next week to talk seeking sister wife and also continue our vpr valley journey and until then Please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.